Let's worship him before we get into the message. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay in my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here at Southridge Church online. I'm excited to get to share week six in our series, Patterns of Prayer, where we've been really wanting to start off the year giving you a resource to help you in your prayer life, because we think prayer makes a difference, that prayer really matters in your life. And what we're going to talk about tonight, I believe that prayer really matters 
Not just in your little personal circle and in your own life, but in the world. In, in the, the whole world. And I don't mean just your little world. I mean really the whole world. Your prayers. One single person's prayers could literally have an effect worldwide if we really start to think about that. Now, I want to share, as we get going tonight with you, one thing that has really helped me in my personal prayer life. When I became the co-lead pastor of Southridge Church uh, four years ago, I decided that I wanted to get really, uh, really focused on prayer, and not just um, prayer for myself, but prayer for those in our church that would bring me prayer requests, because that would happen a lot as a pastor, people would send you a message or see you at church and say, hey, would you be praying about this? And I remember a lot of times I'd be like, yeah, oh, yeah, I'll pray about that. And then I, I had this bad problem of forgetting. So I started to use the notes portion of my iPhone to put people's prayer requests in as they would bring them to me. So that way that I would have a comprehensive list that when it was time for me to sit down and pray or for me to go to my prayer journal, I had all these lists and or all these uh, requests in one place where I would pray for them. And I've been doing that a lot lately, um, just going through my prayer list, praying for folks um, that have asked. And some people stay on my prayer list for a really long time, and then sometimes we see things get better, and, and people come and go. And so I've got this never-ending um, prayer list that is kind of always in flux. And if you've got a prayer request you want me to pray for you, I'd love for you to send me a message or send the church a message and I'd love to pray for you but what I was doing this week as I was preparing for this message is I was looking at my prayer list and I realized that it was kind of incomplete based on what I'm going to talk about tonight see a lot of the prayer requests that were on my personal prayer requests were about me were about my family and were about those closest to me and people that I have interaction with just my little world and if we're honest, that's probably what most of our prayer lives look like. And that's a very good start. That's a good start. Pray for the needs that you have. Pray for the needs of those around you. That's a great place to start with prayer. But tonight, I want to challenge you to pray not just for your little world around you, but for the world at large. And we actually see this being told to Timothy, from the Apostle Paul in his letter, in his first letter to him, the Apostle Paul was this great um, church planter and writer who was, just had this radical transformation when he met Jesus, and Timothy was one of the young men that he mentored, that eventually Timothy went on to be a pastor at, at some very large churches in the first century, and was just well known and well respected, and so Paul writes his mentor, or his mentee, these letters, to kind of help him in ministry. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2, Paul is giving some instructions to Timothy on sort of the way that church should function, some, some things that he needs to be aware of. And in verse 1, it says this. It says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Now, now we could literally just stop there and go, look, Here's what you need to know about praying about the world and praying about things that are way outside of your control and outside your sphere of influence. The place we start is we pray for all people. Now, that seems like a daunting task. It's like, wait a second, 7 billion plus people in the world and you want me to pray for all people? Like, if you're like me, part of me, when I read that, I go, okay, I'm going to pray for some people. And, and really, I'm not sure if it makes that big of a difference, if I don't even know these people halfway around the world. But Paul tells Timothy, he says, listen, there's power in praying for people that you don't even know. Pray for all people, he says. Pray for all people. He says, ask God to help them. Ask God to help them to intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. For who? For all people. Like, could you imagine if the two billion people worldwide that claim to be followers of Jesus were to pray for the other five billion people around the world? What a difference that could actually make. 
But my guess is not many people are in the habit of praying for all people because it seems too big. It seems too daunting. It seems like what would one prayer for all of these people really would it make that big of a difference? And Paul seems to think, yeah, I think it will make a difference because we have a big, big God that we pray to. So he says, ask God to help them. Those people in villages in third world countries that you don't know, ask God to help them. Ask God to send help to the needy around the world. Ask God to send help to the persecuted Christians. You may not know their name, you may not see their face, but ask God to help them, Paul says. He says, intercede on their behalf. Go to the Father on behalf of them and on behalf of their needs. Don't just pray about yourself and the people around you. Pray for people you don't even know. And give thanks for these people. Give thanks for the people all around the world that are different than you. Some of them that don't believe the same as you. Some of them that do not look the same as you. Some of them that have different values than you. Pray for people that you don't even know and give thanks to God for them. Paul goes on, he says, now this is going to be really challenging for some of us, especially those of us in the West that are, that are watching this. We live in a really divided, especially if you're watching this in the United States right now, we live in a really divided country right now when it comes to this next topic. But Paul says, pray this way for kings and all who are in authority. What, what is Paul telling to Timothy? He says, hey, you need to pray for the leaders of your country and for the leaders of countries around the world. And that includes even those that you don't agree with. Those that you're not happy that they're in power, you need to pray for them. I, I was watching right after this past election cycle, one of my friends in ministry here in the local area, and it was on Inauguration Day, and he said, I'm praying for President Biden and Vice President Harris. This is a pastor in our local uh, community who said this. And then I saw people on his Facebook thread say, how could you dare do that? How could you possibly pray for them? As, as if people that perhaps we politically disagree with aren't worthy of our prayers. And I saw that and I go, this is what the matter right now with the world that we would rather go out and spout nonsense on social media about politics than go to the lord in prayer like i, I i've just got to tell you this your prayers are way more powerful than your posts your prayers are way more powerful than your posts listen God can do a lot more through your prayers, especially for prayers for people you disagree with, people that you're upset that they're in power, people that you think, oh, they're going to ruin the world. And, that, and I'm not just saying in this last election cycle. Some of you, you thought this four years ago. Some of you, you think it now. The world's so divided. It doesn't matter. The, 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 the key is you need to focus more on praying than on posting because prayer is going to ultimately have a bigger effect in our world than any of your posts. Prayer is going to have a bigger effect in the world than any of your posts could possibly have. Because, ready for this, your prayer for those in leadership, those that um, are in authority, your prayer for those that affect things that you can't, you, like you, it's personally out of your control, your prayers for those are so much more powerful than your posts about those. Because, I don't want to burst your bubble, but um, Donald Trump and, and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and, and, and any other, Boris Johnson or anyone else that you want to write social media posts about, um, they're not following you. They're not seeing your criticisms. They're not seeing your suggestions. So it's really not having an effect. But the reason why your prayer is more powerful than your post is that though Donald Trump and Joe Biden may not see your post, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords will hear your prayers and be able to do something about it. This is why your prayers are more important than your post. I, I, I thought that a good title for this sermon tonight would be Why Prayer is Better Than Facebook. Why Prayer is Better Than Facebook. And I know, it's very ironic 
for that to be your title of your sermon when we're going to stream this live on Facebook. But this is why prayer is better than Facebook, because, because these people that you're, you're constantly fussing and complaining about, they don't care because they can't see what you're typing. All you're doing is upsetting and, uh, the people around you, and, and you're just causing more division. That's why your prayers are more important and more um, effective than your posts. Now, here, here's what Paul says as he goes on. He says, pray for all people. Pray for those that are in leadership, even those that you don't agree with and wish weren't in authority places. He says, pray like this so that, there's a reason why, so that we can live peaceful, quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. I thought this was interesting that, that Paul says this, and, and why God laid on my heart to say that prayer is better than Facebook, because I was thinking, if we'll pray for those in leaders rather than post about them, then it's a lot easier to live a quiet, peaceful life um, with our dignity and respect intact. Because I was thinking, when we go out and show ourselves on Facebook or on Twitter, we do the exact opposite of this, right? We do the exact opposite of this. When we go out and decide that our posts are more important than prayers, we are not living a peaceful life. We are not living a quiet life. We are not being marked by godliness. Social media does not bring out the best in us, most likely. And we're, most of the time, we've lost our dignity in it. Because we say a lot of really foolish things. We say a lot of hurtful things. We say a lot of divisive things. And Paul's going, look, this is 2,000 years before there was ever social media. He's going, look, pray for those in authority. Because then it will allow you to live in a way that will be attractive to everyone around you. And, and I promise you this. If you're one of those people that is constantly posting negative, divisive things, and everything has to be my opinion, my opinion, my way. How dare you? I can't believe you support this, or I can't believe you support that, or he's going to run our country into the ground, or I can't believe this or that. If that's you, listen, you're not living a godly life, most likely. You, 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 you are more focused. You, you put your hope in the wrong kingdom when you're so concerned with politics that you can't even pray for the people in leadership. Your prayers are more powerful in your post. And it will lead to a life that's more attractive to those around you. And then Paul goes on, he says, this is good and pleases God our Savior. Like, like some of you, you're writing Facebook posts and tweets and Instagram things because you're trying to please someone other than Jesus. You're trying to get likes. You're trying to get retweets. You're trying to get thumbs up. You're trying to get your little circle to think that you're so clever. You're more interested in the praise of people than in pleasing Jesus, which is why you're so determined to use social media as a platform to sow division and, and be harsh with one another rather than live this quiet, peaceful life of prayer that honors God and really pleases Jesus. He says, this pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. Now, now here's, here's the good connection here with this, is that if your number one goal is like God's, then you care about people being saved. You don't care about winning arguments when you're really living for God. You don't care about looking clever on social media when you're really trying to live for God. Uh, you're much more concerned with praying for those that are in positions of authority, praying and loving people than trying to be right all the time, trying to prove a point. That's why prayer is better than Facebook, and that's why prayer is better than Twitter. That's why prayer is better than Parler or whatever else you want to be on. That's why prayer is always better because prayer shows that we are way more concerned with the salvation of others and the spreading of God's kingdom than the spreading of our own kingdom, seeing how many likes and how many followers we can get. That's why prayer is better. Paul says there's only one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man, Christ Jesus, he gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. And I have been chosen as a preacher and apostle to teach the Gentiles this message about faith and truth. I'm not exaggerating. I am telling you the truth. Prayer is more powerful than your post. 
pr prayer leads to a life that's pleasing to God. Let me give you one more idea that Paul just hit on, is that prayer connects us to the one true mediator, the one person that connects us to God, our Creator. Prayer connects us to Him. That's Jesus in a way that social media can never connect us to the people that we're always fussing and fighting about. Prayer will connect you with someone that can actually help you. Like, you ever have to call a place and you go through the whole customer service thing and it's always a robot and, and like you just sit on the phone and you're going, representative, representative, representative. And it's like, sorry, you have not entered the right information. Please enter your account number. Representative, we will not put you through to a representative until you have given us your date of birth. Whatever it is, and it's like, representative, representative, representative. Like, you just get crazy. It's like, would you just get me to someone that can help? Well, see, this is what it looks like. When, when you're always out on social media, out trying to espouse your opinion and fight and fuss, and you've got to comment on everything about the news that pops up, that's you. You're sitting there going, representative, representative. And these people that you've put so much hope and trust in, that, that are in places of authority, they never see it, they don't care what your opinion is, and they're not sitting there worried about what you said about them on Twitter. You're, you're just sitting there, representative, representative, and it's like, yeah, sorry, you're not getting through. Whereas if you would go and pray about it, you're going to get to the one mediator, Jesus Christ, who can actually do something about these situations. And this is why prayer is better than Facebook and any other social media that you want to fill in the blank with. Prayer can actually get stuff done. Prayer connects you to someone that actually cares. When you post things, you are posting to people that do not care one bit about what you have to say. Prayer is way superior to your post. So tonight, the, the application is simple. Would we be people that pray a lot more than we post? Would we be people that pray a lot more than we post? And, and if you're going to be someone that posts, can you make sure that if you claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ, that those posts are always something that would attract people to the gospel instead of deter them from it? Would, would you make sure that everything that you say, everything that you type is seasoned with salt of love? That, that makes people attracted to it and not full of hate and division that keeps pushing people away from the gospel. We have to learn to pray more than we post. It's going to have a bigger effect. So these were some things I was telling you about my prayer list that I had to make some changes. I went in and I said, I'm going to pray for people that are in authority in our country, in my state, and around the world. Because Paul says, pray for everyone and pray for your leaders. So I put in the leaders. I want to make sure I pray for them. And then I also put, pray for people around the world. Pray for poverty-stricken people around the world. Pray for persecuted Christians around the world. So I had to go in and I had to make some changes to my prayer list. So the way I wasn't just praying about me and my little circle, which is important, but that way then my focus could also be all around the world. And I don't know what God will do through all these little prayers. And sometimes we can seem so insignificant in such a big world, but I know God's word says to pray for all people and pray for people in authority. And I may not understand, and I may have a lack of faith to think that that really affects any meaningful change, but I'm going to trust that what God says in his word is ultimately going to lead to a better outcome than thinking that my social media is the hope of the world. That thinking that what I have to say that article that I just had to share, like, like it's the hope of the world. No, 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 no. I'm going to go in prayer to the true hope of the world, Jesus Christ. And I believe that with my prayers, he will do so much more in this world. Things that I may never even know about. So much more good will come from that than anything I could ever post. I want to challenge you. Begin to pray more than you post. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for this challenge. I know it's an odd challenge to, to, to think of prayer being at opposition with this new thing that, you know, when the Bible was being written, it was, you, nobody was even thinking about social media. But here we are in this context, and we're thinking, man, it's so much easier to complain and fuss about our national leaders than to pray for them. 
And it's so easy to demonize people that we don't have to see face to face. And it's so easy to demonize people and set up little straw men that we can tear down when it's only one-sided conversation. And so I pray that, that the, the, the people of God would begin to shun that idea and begin to put their hope and faith and trust in Jesus and in praying. That, and let us, let us truly understand and believe this idea that prayer is more effective than Facebook ever will be. That we're tapping into a power that is bigger than social media. It's bigger than public opinion and public outcry. Prayer is bigger than those because it connects us to the one that is bigger than everything, to the one that created everything, to the one that is everything. So God, I pray that your body would take this challenge to pray more than we post. And though we may never see the faces of those that our prayers affect, let us trust that they are working, that they are important, and that they are effective, and that they matter. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you for coming and to be one of us, to show us the life that we ought to live. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week.